Today I have got actually a Korean novel that has English translations. A very famous Korean novel, in fact. Hello, fellow plot questers. It is Aaron the Plot Quester meeting you with another video with Carpool Tunnel. Yay! And today I got this very very interesting book called Our Twisted Hero. 우리들의 읽어주는 영웅. It has won the best literary prize possible back in 1987 in the 11th version of the award, and it's basically like the Newbery Award except it's Korean. And in Korean literature, it's like one of the one of the highest and one of the most famous Korean literatures of, of all time. Um, a lot of controversies actually surround the author because like he isn't like a masterful writer, but he does a very good job of implementing societal problems and symbolisms into the book, like an allegory into the book, and he does a really good job of that. So there's a, a lot of people that say, hey, he just kind of was born at the right time and abused that, and other people just say he, that's skill too. You know, whatever. I, I think it's skill. I think it's whatever. I, I think it's quite well written. And let's get straight into it. So this book is actually the entire thing is an allegory of back in the 1980s. Back then, um, the Korean government wasn't exactly the most, uh, the most legit. Let's just say it is kind of corrupt, and there's a lot of people who abuse their power and kind of just kind of just reign king in this tiny little society. And that is represented in allegory through school life of these kids. The main character Pyeongtae is pushed out towards the rural area because of his dad's job when he used to live in the capital Seoul. And he's a bit of a slightly, slightly stuck up but quite smart kid who got quite good grades in Seoul and now he's gone, he's going to this really countryside out of the way school. And it kind of sucks there. And in the cl when he first enters the classroom, he meets Seokdae. And Seokdae seems to hold all of the power in the classroom. Every single person within the room supports him, and he makes every single person kneel down, and basically he rules over them like a king in a tiny little, tiny little island. And that's what he does. And to some extent, and basically the book is just about Pyeongtae trying to rebel against Seokdae's evil, tyrannical rule, and and it looks so mighty. He looks so. Like it's such a large figure, like like so powerful when when he's leader and when he's when he's commanding all the kids to bully him and trying to make him kneel. And then we get we when we get a teacher. And by the way, this is they they've moved grades, but the grade but the classes are the same. I'm not hundred percent sure of the, how that works, but yeah. And they they move class. I mean they they rise up one grade and they get a new homeroom teacher. And this homeroom teacher is kind of young, kind of sharp with it, and he kind of realizes, hey, Seokdae, he doesn't seem to be a really good kid. Now, here, I, I know I kind of skipped over Seokdae's, like, atrocities, so let's just go over some things, shall we? He takes things from kids, like, just takes them. He just says, hey, that kind of looks cool, that means if you don't give it to me right now, I'm gonna kill you. And then, ooh, that looks really cool. That means if you don't give it to me right now, I'll throw you out of the window. Defenestration. Yeah, that, that's pretty much his language. And also, he's the best at fighting within the school, so no one can really like fight against him and win. And he's, he gets all of the best students in every single subject and makes them write his name on their tests, and erasing their names, by the way, so that he gets perfect grades for the entire grade. And that's why he's first within the school. It's honestly quite insane. He's, he's, he's insane. And, and he threatens everyone, and he rules over everyone, so everyone votes for him to become the class president. So he uses both his military might and his technically legal right to torture the people he doesn't like and really lift up people he likes. And Pionte, the main character, doesn't want to, doesn't want to become, you know, become, become his, one of his little poor kids, um, slaves, I, I would call them. And he rebels, and obviously Sokka doesn't like that, and he does a lot of things within his power to, you know, make try to make Pyeongtae kneel. And I think, like, I love how he looked so strong and so mighty and so unstoppable in the view of the main character, because that's what it, that's what a corrupt government looks like from within the country. Like, we, we look at, like, for example, a corrupt government, with it, if we live in that country, and we're like, there's nothing we can do about it. It's too big, it's too powerful, even if we rebel in small ways, they just stamp us out. 
with their legal and not so legal powers. And then, like I said, they go up one grade and then this new homeroom teacher, who's very sharp by the way, he, he kind of notices something's up, like this kid, Sokte, hmm, kind of weird. And he starts to kind of interrogate, he starts to kind of sniff around and he finds out about the test conspiracy thing. You know, the, the, the thing where, where Sokte forces the, the, the leaders, the number ones of each subject to write, you know, write, write their name on their, write his name on their test so that he could get perfect scores. You know, that, that really, really terrible, annoying thing that he does. Yeah, that thing. And the teacher, and the teacher finds out about that. And he, and he like completely like beats the crap out of Sokte and makes him kneel and everything. And it was, it's a very, it's a very interesting scene. It's a very shocking scene. And in that scene, there's a description. There's a very particular description that, that kind of shows that makes the teacher look like a giant and Sokte like a little, little elf, like a little dwarf, like this small and pitiful. And I think that's a really cool representation of good allegory of a corrupt government like when the corrupt government is super duper strong and they're doing well they really aren't afraid of anything they look unstoppable and then as soon as they start to get destroyed and as they as they start to deteriorate and then the president is pulled out and then a leg actually legitimate election is made that's when when we do that the all-powerful seemingly all-powerful leader and the unstoppable person dictator slash corrupt president or in this case Sokte, they just look like just like one of us a pitiful human being who's just trying to live their lives and i thought that that was really interesting and at the end of the book the the main character meets uh Sokte once more when they grow up and he kind of expects Sokte to become like some sort of like super duper strong like like something like maybe maybe just has a lot of money or is some sort of gang leader like a like a topuk leader or, or something and he kind of expects that however no he's just a common criminal getting caught by the cops he's he's he was so he looked so unstoppable and he made his life hell for a full year and he actually made him surrender and he actually became one of a person who accepted this really screwed up society that Sokte has made, but he would seem so almighty and all that back then, and now, and eh, not so much. He's just, he's just a man. He's a criminal who got captured by the police. That's it. And again, that really is a good allegory of of the Korea, of the Korean society back then, of like a corrupt like for like a corrupt president. Like there are several corrupt presidents like most countries at the beginning and it just yeah it, i i think it's just a really excellent allegory like that that sharp contrast between when he was ruling over the kids and when he like fell down and he lost that authority that that just that contrast it's a beautiful it's well written and the impact points are really really good and the way that the story structured really helps bring out those impacts nicely and it's very very well written so if you ever see um, a, a translated version of this, it, it's going to be called Our Twisted Hero, then yeah, go ahead and try reading it because it's going to be interesting. It, it gives you a little little view, a little little thing, a little window into Korean society back in the 1980s. And yeah, that's pretty much it. I guess in some ways this is like like a, one of the great allegorical novels of Korean literature. Like, for example, in English literature, let's say um, Animal Farm, that's a great allegory of the Russian Revolution. And this is a, an allegory of the corrupt Korean government system and the corrupt Korean society back in the 1980s. And it's very interesting thinking about the symbolistic things. Otherwise, it's just about a kid who gets bullied and then the kid who bullies the kid beats the, gets beats the crap out of and then grows up to be criminal. That's the one line summary of it. But there's so much more to it because like I said, it's an allegory and if you look deep into it, you can see a lot of really cool things. And like always, your plot question and a plot question, not a typical English novel or book review, but it's a pretty good book. So yeah, highly recommend. Actually, not highly super duper highly recommend, but fairly highly recommended. I would, I would give this a, 
a easy 7 out of 10. It's, it's pretty good, especially if you look into the allegory and symbolism stuff. Have a great day, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you.